Excellent. Excellent. Um, so which organizations outside of sales within the company were impacted? Because you're talking about, you know, fairly significant changes in, in approach, um, but I imagine there are processes and other things that change. So what, what are the organizations that felt the change and was it, how did they receive it? Yeah, so again- There's an investment in sales, but maybe maybe the guy- <laughs> No, well, there, was, there was investment across the board. It, it, you know, the transformation efforts, um, you know, we digitize a lot of our, uh, the lower end of our book, right? To, mm -hmm. to, you know, we, we, we were over-servicing customers who didn't want to be over-serviced. They didn't mm -hmm. want a phone call letting them know what the dollar was going to be doing in three weeks' time or what it's done in the last three months. They, they just wanted to make a payment. So we brought in our, we, we enhanced our digital offering and then migrated many clients into that digital platform, which obviously had knock-on effects on our middle and back offices. So we needed their engagement and buy-in. And, you know, we've been through a, a Western Union at the mothership, we've been through a whole Wu Wei transformation, right? So it's been a two year journey of becoming more lean, more agile in everything that we do, mm. you know, making sure that everything has a purpose and, you know, following our, following a designated approach to mm -hmm. all, all things. So these guys really adopted that Wu Wei principle really early on. And, and, and they were actually a good um, standard bearer for us in what we did in sales, because we were able to refer to the policies, procedures, the processes mm. that these guys followed to achieve what they achieved. So they'd cascade that into sales as well. So um, everybody was impacted and the results have been where we are today. That's fantastic. Um, from a fallout perspective where we talked about some folks didn't make it all the way on the journey and you, you helped them go be successful somewhere else, but was there, could you quantify that in terms of how, how much of the organization managed to stay with you on the journey and, and what percent chose to go and journey somewhere else? I, I, I don't know the figures. I, sure. I would say it, it, was, it was minimal. Mm -hmm. I think the the impact of moving people from a management position back into a frontline position has been incredibly successful. I think all of those people that would have seen that as a potential negative move yeah. are now thriving with what they're doing. You know, no one, no more one to ones, no more coaching sessions. Just get on out there and serve, it, look after the customer, and be great salespeople, which they're doing. Um, look, people will always move on. Um, I, I don't know the numbers. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's been a significant. Um, a significant number. And, and obviously you would have known, I mean, if you would have seen that, but um, l let's talk a little bit about this, you know, what would be perceived as this demotion. But I think you said it so well earlier when you talked about, you know, these people weren't really in a job that they loved. It wasn't the things that they wanted to do. But of course we all have egos that can get attached to titles or positions within the business. And um, what are some of the ways that you managed that so that it was successful and that they saw that they were actually going to go to a place where they would be happier and, and more successful within the business. So we, we used that capability assessment as it was documented evidence, you know, mm. they'd answered it. We hadn't forced them, they did it in their own time, <laughs> in their own way. And they told us that coaching others wasn't a high priority for them. Yeah. Whereas closing the deal was the high priority for them. So we were able to use that. And then it obviously came down to people management skills. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not an easy conversation to have. You know, there was some pushback, mm -hmm. um, you know, but trying to make it clear that you know, this isn't a negative, uh, a negative move. This is a real positive opportunity for you to go and thrive and, you know, do what you're good at. Mm. And um, I, I, I sit here with a great deal of pride that the people that I personally was involved in in that uh, in that move have all come to me since then and sort of been grateful for that. And you know, I, I see there in the you know the top ten global league tables um, of our uh, sales performance ladders and yeah, feel very good about that. And and so do they. You talked a few times, you've mentioned about, you know, continually innovating and that change is always happening and that transformation is actually not an event that occurred, but it's sort of an ongoing way of doing business and process. What, what are, what's on the horizon now or what are those next transformations that you see going through um, in the business? Um, it's hard to know what you don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know that we're going to expand the channel partner uh, world. Speaking personally, I, I took this role on at the start of May last year mm -hmm. to formalize the channel partner business to provide that, you know, more uh, technically integrated partners into a client base to allow us to grow and scale faster. We can't just rely on our sales teams mm -hmm. endeavors to get us where we need to get to, but also to in use it to onboard and find partners that can introduce us to warmer middle of the funnel leads. So in all of our territories, that's starting to gather some momentum now and really excited by what that can potentially achieve for us as a business. 
Um, and you know, my dream being that you know, channel partners will be equal to, and then hopefully beyond in terms of delivery, what the direct sales org can do. So we can help support that. So that's a, a significant piece of transformation that I am personally invested mm. in and very, very excited about. Outside of that, you know, the continual digitization, you know, customers want to deal on it. They don't want to be speaking face to face or over the phone. They want to be dealing digitally, certainly when it comes to money movement. So obviously that will continue to enhance. Um, but then there's the, again, the regulatory, the compliance challenges all around the world. You know, thankfully we have a great deal of investment in our compliance organization. Mm. Out of 12,000 global employees, over 20% of them work in, our, in compliance. So, you know, moving money is very, very complicated and comes with many risks. Um, so having that investment in compliance, I'm sure is going to continue to uh, to transform to make sure we stay at the forefront of, of what we do. Um, and it's a huge, huge value prop, part of our value proposition, our commitment to compliance. Well, certainly the political landscape continues to be interesting throughout the world and that has a direct impact on those areas. So we'll, we'll watch that space and see how things go. Sure, yeah. I mean, th th the good thing about Western Union Business Solutions, and our, our education vertical, for example, is a is a strong part of our business. Yeah. So, you know, students flying in from various parts of the world, you know, with what went on in Brexit, you know, we perhaps saw the UK student intake drop a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, with uh, Mr. Trump in the US doing what he does. Some people were choosing not to go to the US, but our education business is really strong in Canada, in Australia. So globally, we've, we've got it covered. Right. Yeah. So that, that migrating student population, which is only going to grow and continue to thrive, have got choices and thankfully we are well well positioned in each of those territories to, to service that market. I'm going to step back just a tiny bit in our conversation to something I want to ask you about. It's when you've talked about, you know, you'd serviced customers one to one, you treated all customers the same and you've gone through a process to, to change that, which to me sounds sort of like segmentation, right? The segmenting of, of your market, of your base. And this is something that a lot of companies we, we struggle with like how do you how do you define the segments is it company size is it revenue is it share of wallet <laughs> is it product is it yeah and um, maybe talk a little bit about you know it, it's not so important perhaps where you landed with your segments but what was the process that you used to arrive at those segments because then you also were essentially segmenting your sales force which sounds like the tool that you use would have been really helpful in then aligning the right employees to the right segment that they yeah. would serve but can you share with us how you sort of segmented the accounts and took on that headache? <laughs> it's a good question. You put me right on the spot now with our marketing team is going to be looking to this answer, what I give now. Um, it's your moment to shine. <laughs> ah, I feel the pressure now. Um, no, it was a huge piece of work. Um, there was, it was over many months taking our voice of customer feedback. That's where yeah. it all begins. What is our customer need? You know, what, what, how do they want to be serviced? Um, and then building out I think we had six or seven different segments that we that mm -hmm. we went with in the end, and the, we we covered all the ranges, but mm -hmm. we were able to then categorize those clients into you know whether they wanted you know a trusted advisor service, or that you know they were more so for an FI for example maybe more focused on um, on the compliance mm -hmm. aspect or the regulatory aspect. So it was lines and lines of data. It was many many calls, conferences, meetings, um, interviews with clients, interview with frontline. And then just a, a great project management exercise yeah. of bringing it all together, and then um, quite a funky um, sales pitch out to the internal teams in, in Western Union about why we were doing it and what it actually was. And you know, we now have our segmentation pretty embedded in our business. And you know, it's it, there's regular reminders, regular top up sessions about what it is, why it is, mm. and yeah, I think it. It works well, but it's, it was a huge piece of work, and I definitely haven't given it justice there in that two no. minute. No, but I, I think that you said some really good things there. You know, first of all, it is a big piece of work and it needs to be done incredibly thoughtfully because not only um, is it about reshaping who sits where <clears throat> and then remapping talent, but it's a change for the customer. They might be talking to different people and um, also, you know, we're not used to what they don't want to talk to us as often. So, you know, don't, they always want to talk to their salespeople. So sometimes it was also that, um, you know, cutting off a little bit of a limb and getting people used to that yeah. compensation, the impact of, you know, where deals were at in the process when you move the account, who's going to get paid if it closes in six months versus yeah. now. So um, I can appreciate that it was a very complex uh, and, and thoughtful effort that was undertaken. And I think it's still helpful 
for our audience to hear, you know, um, just the level of effort that went into it. And I think thoughtfulness, it sounds like, again, yeah. a set of decisions that were made thoughtfully, but obviously they have to be made in, in uh, according to what's best for the customer and best for the business. For sure. And it, it needed a bit of corporate bravery as well. Yeah. You know, because you know, not all customers are equal. And, you know, what, what, what the computer said, one customer fitted into a certain segment, you know, they didn't see it that way, you know. Mm -hmm. So we had to, we had to be consistent. Um, and we tried to stick to our guns in that respect and uh, yeah. keep the customer at the heart, but there was an yeah. occasional challenge there. Yeah, they have to go through changes too. And, and usually it ends up working out mostly okay. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, every time, every transformation we've ever been through, you know, every single one of our customers in one way or another transforms the way they're yeah. doing business. You know, they're servicing their customers differently to what they did five, 10 Absolutely. years ago. So it, it, it's a lever that we can pull um, with, with our customer base when it needs to be. So as we bring our conversation to a close, which has been really, really insightful, um, what advice do you have for companies who might be facing kind of being, you know, the need to be reborn? Because I think th there's many things that you discussed today that in some ways it, it's almost like starting over mm. for a lot of people. So what kind of key advice might you leave them with? And, and particularly if there's any key do's and key don'ts. I think the first, first thing I would say is do it. Don't just talk about it. I, I, I've been to a few events, the CSO events in Chepstow, you know, and there's a lot of talk about what they, what, what, what we're going to do, how we're going to do it. But does it ever actually happen? Mm. You know, I think be brave, do it and over communicate, bring people with you on the journey, but accept that not everyone's going to go with you on that, on that journey. Um, and find a way of measuring how you transform and make sure you are getting an ROI on it. Um, None of it's easy. It needs real <laughs> bravery at the top table. You know, our our leadership team had to be resolute in their belief of this. Mm. And, you know, no matter what the front line was saying, what apparently our customers were saying, this is the path we were going on. And this is the path we were going to stay on. So be brave, do it, be consistent and over communicate. I love that. Be resolute. We definitely don't use that word enough, I think, oh, uh, yes. in modern times. You did mention and, and actually we should before we let you go, ask that question. You mentioned about the ROI. So can you talk to us a little bit about the ROI that you guys achieved as a result of all the transformation that not only have you been through, I know it, it'll be a continuous process, but that would be good to hear. The only, uh, I think from an ROI, our employee attrition is, is better than it was. I don't know what the percentage is, I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm gonna give you a typical salesperson's answer here. Um, I'd say our capability uplift was above average, above what was expected and our closure rates on those opportunities where we use the Altify tool was 7%. So we've won 7% more business as a result of that particular element of the transformation. Those so, seem like great reasons to do it. <laughs> there's, a, there's lots of great reasons, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I'm hoping that our sales teams and our frontline staff, when they see this, will be nodding their head and going, oh, this has been great. I'm sure there'll be a few dissenters and naysayers out there, but I think overall we can look back and go, we, we started on a really good journey here and it's making our business better, helping us to serve our customers better. And it's a, you know, a better place for our, our workforce to, to be part of. Many of the great things that we achieve don't come painlessly. So uh, I'm sure there were pains along the way, but you know, if, sure. if overall they were bearable and most people survive them without too many yeah. scars, then I think that's something that we can celebrate and be proud of, um, particularly keeping the customer and your employees at the center of yeah. what you did, which- you, you are not gonna get out of this without a few scrapes and yeah. bruises, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, you can minimize them. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you today, Howard. Thank you for giving us your time in this beautiful location Amazing. with the Sales First Tower. Um, it's really been lovely. So thank you again, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Cheers. It's been good.